Hey, welcome to this lesson on dimensions, planes, sides, shapes, and solids. This lesson should be a review of some things that you already know, but just in case you don't, some essential questions. What are dimensions? What is a plane? What is a shape? What is a side? And what is a solid? We're going to build off what we know about points, lines, and line segments and see how other geometric figures are constructed. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to use just the basic language and labels uh, to define basic geometric figures like planes, shapes, sides, and solids. We've already been exposed to points and lines. Now let's think about planes. And you can view planes as really a flat surface that exists in three dimensions that goes off in every direction. So for example, if I have a flat surface like this, and it's not curved, and it just keeps going on and on and on in every direction. Now the question is, how do you specify a plane? Well, you might say, well, let's see, let's think about it a little bit. Could I specify a plane with one point right over here? Let's call that point A. Would that alone be able to specify a plane? Well, there's an infinite number of planes that could go through that point. I could have a plane that goes like this, where that point A sits on that plane. I could have a plane like that. Or I could have a plane like this. I could have a plane like this, where point A sits on it as well. So I could have a plane like that. And I could just keep rotating around A. So one point by itself does not seem to be sufficient to define a plane. Well, what about two points? Let's say I had a point B right over here. Well, notice, the way I drew this, point A and B, they would define a line. For example, they would define this line right over here. So they would define, they could define this line right over here. But both of these points, and in fact this entire line, exists on both of these planes that I just drew. And I could keep rotating these planes. I could have a plane that looks like this. I could have a plane that looks like this, that both of these, that both of these points actually sit on. I'm essentially just rotating around this line that is defined by both of these, by both of these points. So two points does not seem to be sufficient. Let's try three. So there's no way that I could put, well, let's be careful here. So I could put a third point right over here, point C. And C sits on that line, and C sits on all of these planes. So it doesn't seem like just a random third point is sufficient to define, to pick out any one of these planes. But what if we make the constraint that the three points are not all on the same line? Obviously, two points can, will, will always define a line. But what if the three points are not collinear? So instead of picking C as a point, what if we pick, what if we, is there any way to pick a point D that is not on this line that is on, that is on more than one of these planes? Well, no. If I say, well, let's say point D, let's say point D is right over here, so it sits on this plane right over here, one of the first ones that I drew. So point D sits on that plane. Between point D, A, and B, there's only one plane that all three of those points sit on. So a plane is defined by three non-collinear points. So D, A, and B, you see, do not sit on the same line. A and B can sit on the same line. D and A can sit on the same line. D and B can sit on the same line. But A, B, and D does not sit on, they are non-collinear. So for example, right over here in this diagram, we have a plane. This plane is labeled S. But another way that we can specify plane S is we could say plane, and we just have to find three non-collinear points on that plane. So we could call this plane AJB, AJB. We could call it plane JBW, plane J, B, W, we could call it plane, and I could keep going, plane W, J, A, W, J, A. But I could not specify this plane uniquely by saying, so I could not say plane, plane A, B, W. And the reason why I can't do this is because A, B, W are all on the same line, and this line sits on an infinite number of planes. I could keep rotating around the line just as we did over here. It does not specify only one plane. Now that you've watched that wonderful video by Samuel Khan, let's just review some things, especially dimensions. So dimensions is how many ways you can measure something. For example, points, they have zero 
dimension. You can't measure their length or their width. The point is infinitely small. Lines have one dimension. You can measure their length. There's, it goes one way. Um, they only go in one direction. So you can only measure them one way. Planes, they have two directions. They go infinitely in two different directions. So they have two dimensions. You can measure, think of it, think of like a square on a plane. You can measure its length and its width. Solids have three dimensions. They go three different ways that are perpendicular to each other. So you can measure them three different ways. Think of like a cube. You can measure its length, its width, and its height. Here's some examples of planes. I show you over here on the right. These are three different planes together. A plane is just a flat two-dimensional surface surface. So it's two dimensions, so it goes infinitely in this direction on, along this axis here, and infinitely on in both directions this way as well. So think of the coordinate plane as an example of a two-dimensional plane. And so shapes are bounded regions on a two-dimensional plane. So you have this flat, infinite surface, and when line segments make up a bounded region, for example, you have four different line segments right here, and this region, that's the shape. So there's all different types of shapes. They're two-dimensional, and they are flat. They are infinitely thin. Now sides are just the line segments that make up the shapes. So a side of a shape is just a simple line segment. And those sides are all connected and they bound a certain region inside the shape. Now solids are kind of like shapes, but they have a third dimension. They have a height, ha height added to them. So solids take up the three-dimensional space that we live in. So take some time, pause the video, and make sure you write down these, these definitions in your notebook. They'll definitely come in handy for uh, exercises and assignments down the road. That's all for this lesson. I uh, hope you're able to answer these essential questions. Hope you learn stuff. If you're not, make sure you go back through the video, watch the places where you're confused. And if you need more help, make sure you contact me or Mr. Koss. And also, make sure you come to live class where we'll talk about this even more and we will be able to answer your questions uh, that you have. And next lesson, we're going to be talking more about specifying points and more about points and, and different ways we can use them.